Hey guys, me again. This might be a slightly controversial video. Um, I am going to talk about the things that foreigners, particularly Americans, do that really annoy me. Now, I am basing this about my family. I am basing this on my family. They came to Japan actually a few weeks ago, and I meant to record this video much sooner, but, you know, time and just overall laziness got the better of me. Anyways, my family came, and they are very, very American. <laughs> like, America. Our adventure through Japan was very interesting. They did a lot of things that just really ticked me off, and even some cringeworthy things. And I'm going to talk about all of them. The first thing uh, that I want to talk about is being just overall loud and obnoxious. Japan is a relatively quiet country, especially when you compare it to America, um, especially in public places like trains. <laughs> trains, you should really be quiet and considerate of the other passengers. My family was not. They would just openly talk to each other. If we sat kind of, uh, just my mom and my younger brother came by the way, and if we sat kind of across from each other on a train, we'd just say, so what'd you think of like da 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 and I'm just, I, sometimes I had to remind them, guys, be quiet. <laughs> like, the second thing they did was they started talking to Japanese people in English, expecting them to understand. Which is really inconsiderate. Like, really inconsiderate. You should at least rely on the person that you're with who can kind of speak Japanese <laughs> to help you. Don't just go up to people and expect them to understand or speak English. This is a very American mentality where, you know, I, I, I like to call it American privilege. Americans who are like America, Americans tend to think that they can go to whatever place they want and just speak English and get away with it, get by. That's not always the case, especially in Japan. Oftentimes, the person they were speaking to became very flustered and became very uh, nervous uh, because they're, you know, they're being spoken to in a language they don't really understand or they have very little training or very little confidence in. At the beginning, they actually did kind of let me translate and stuff like that, but they, being the impatient people that my family are, they kind of just was like, screw David, do you have this in a size 12? You know, like, it was just ridiculous. The third thing they did was complain. Complain, complain, complain the whole time they were in Japan. We were only in Japan for about a week and we were touring the like best places, right? Tokyo, Kyoto, Osaka, Nara, um, and we ended up in my city of Matsue and we also visited Izumo. But the whole time they were just complaining and it was mainly about the cultural differences, of course. Why are everyone wearing masks? That's weird. Why are their food sizes so small? Why can't I change my order a little bit? Why do we have to take the train everywhere? Why can't we just, why isn't everything closed? Da, 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 da. Why do we have to do so much walking? Uh, it was so annoying. And most of that, I will say, comes from my brother who naturally complains about everything. His whole life is nothing but complaints. So. I mean, I should expect that. It was still super annoying. The fourth thing they did was doubt my Japanese ability. There were points at which my mom was like, you didn't understand anything she said, did you? Um, it's not like that, Julie. That's my mom's name. It's not like that, Julie. No. Granted, I'm not native. I'm not fluent in the language yet. I can understand the gist of things Sometimes, you know, I encounter words or phrases that I don't know at all, and sometimes I do get a little lost, but overall, everything was, you know, fine. Everything was working out, but my mom is just really like, she tried, she's very headstrong, and she likes to take things into her own hands, 
and she likes being in control. So after a while, she just kind of started doing her own thing, started ignoring me. And I'm the one planning this whole trip, so that was just so frustrating. A few times, actually, I lost my temper and kind of yelled at her. No one can really make me angry. I don't get angry. I really don't. No one can make me angry except my family. The fifth thing they did was joke about radiation and the Fukushima nuclear disaster that happened back in 2011. Before they came, they found articles claiming that everyone in Tokyo should abandon the city, everyone should move out, they're all slowly being poisoned to death, yada 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 yada. Of course, they found articles that agreed with their preconceived opinions and notions and assumptions. Guys, you can find articles like that anywhere on the internet. There's always gonna be someone who is gonna feed into your preconceived notions and who will feed your preconceived assumptions and therefore create a fear factor <laughs> that will make you not want to go someplace or make you not want to visit someplace. Tokyo is safe. The Kansai region is safe. Matsue, Chugoku region is also safe. I had to reassure them that it's fine, right? And most of the articles they were looking at, they were misinterpreting anyway. You know, if you're coming to Japan and you're reading articles like this and you're believing them, don't come to Japan. We're fine without you. This also leads me in into a discussion on closed-mindedness. My family is very close-minded. Again, they're just very America, right? Like, mm, America. <laughs> Morocco's the best. Like, I'm never leaving this country. My brother actually said there's a 95% chance that I will never come back to Japan. I was like, that's fine with me. <laughs> See ya. The sixth thing they did that really pissed me off was complaining all the time about the cold. They are from Florida. We are Floridians. We are used to very hot, humid weather. So yes, I can understand about them complaining about this, but... Don't, just get over it. I did, I'm used to the weather, like, I'm fine. Ugh, the seventh thing really bugs me. The seventh thing that my family did was complain about the use of cash in Japan. For those of you who don't know, Japan is a cash-centered society. It is many, 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 many places, even in Tokyo, even in Kyoto and Osaka, still don't use credit cards. They still don't accept credit cards or debit cards. Most of it is cash and coins. I actually had to buy a new wallet with a coin uh, coin pouch inside of it because I was just using so many coins and I told them this. I told them you guys have to bring a significant amount of cash and coins. Don't rely on your credit cards. I told them that. They came anyway still expecting <laughs> to use credit cards. They brought cash, they did, ran out, of course, but they, every time they complained, they would go into a store, I remember, this is so rude, they would go to a store like at Disney, right, we actually went to Tokyo Disneyland for a few hours. <laughs> My mom wanted to buy something, she's like, do you take credit cards? And she, by this point, she was already pissed off, right, that a lot of places didn't take credit cards. And when the guy said no for the umpteenth time, uh, my mom kind of was like, you know, you'd get more business if you took credit cards, you should really switch. That's another example of the American privilege that I was talking about earlier. American privilege is basically saying, you know, the way, the, thing, the way we do things in America is better and overall more efficient, so you should change. That's American privilege. It's a very ethnocentric way of thinking about things. Just believing that the way you do things in your society is better than every other society and that that society should change to conform to your standards or the way the things, how you do things in your society. That is just not being cultural, culturally relative at all. That's the complete opposite and it's, it's really sad to see, especially coming from my family. But I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be surprised because it's my family and they're just so... American, like, <sighs> gets me down sometimes. Actually, my mom did that a few times, where she would say, you guys should really switch to credit cards, you get a lot more business. That is so rude. And actually, at one point, 
we walked into a store and my mom just straight out asked, do you take credit cards? And when the guy said no, she was like, all right, let's go. She like made a big scene and kind of just walked us all out of the store, basically in protest. It was just, ugh. I actually looked this up. This is called cultural imperialism or cultural imposition. Kind of like when you're forcing your cultural values and standards on another culture. Not cool, not cool at all. And the eighth final thing would be just the overall attitude of my brother. He's very much a brat. And I taught my mom the word for brat, warugaki, in Japanese. He's very much warugaki, and he's a brat. Didn't want to participate in really any cultural thing. Didn't want to try really any food except Western food like McDonald's. Actually, the first two meals my family had in Japan were at a Japanese McDonald's. Yeah. But I love my family. I'm just... I love to love them from afar. You know, across an ocean. Several hours away by plane. If you guys have family members like that, if you know people like that, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you really hate, what you guys... Let me know how you deal with people like that. Because I really... I can't... I can't even with my family. <laughs> and also, if you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, or suggestions for future video topics, just let me know in the comments below. Thanks. Peace, guys.